Brother Nick says, rather be in the house of the Lord than the best prison in the state. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, you know, last week we were uh, talking about the importance of testimonies. When we give a testimony, we're telling people about what God has done for us. The testimony not only gives opportunity to praise God for His great goodness that was demonstrated in that testimony, but also it should be a powerful encouragement to those who hear it because that means God will do the same for them. Amen. You don't have to put these up, but in Acts 2.11, and I mean Romans 2.11 and Acts 10.34, as well as other scriptures, they tell us that God does not show partiality. He's not a respecter of persons. The key to receiving provision of the Word is to activate the promise by releasing your faith in the promise. God will always do what His Word says He will do. You are the one who must act in faith to receive it. Amen. 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 And what He does for one, He'll do for all. Now remember, we said that trust is the foundation upon which faith is established. Yes. We trust God because of who He is. Yes. God and His Word are one, so therefore we trust His Word. Yes. And we can put our faith in His Word to be fulfilled for us. Yes. Amen? Amen? Now, when we give testimony, we're also reminding ourselves of what God has done for us. Yes. Okay? We can praise God again each time we tell it for the wonderful way in which He's worked in our life. But it's also a means of causing our faith to increase because not only has God something, done something great for us, but it tells us that God will continue to do great things for us because He does not change. So, as the words, we're moving from faith to faith one level of faith to a greater level of faith because we've been encouraged by what we've witnessed and therefore we can believe for more. Isn't that great? If I've had faith for this and this happened, now I can increase my faith for this and believe that's going to happen. You know, it's... Uh, yeah, I'm going to get off on trail there. I'm going to stay with what I'm doing here. As I, uh, anyway, moving from one faith level to another, moving from faith to faith. Remember what God has been speaking to us in our prayer times these last few weeks. Believe for the more. Believe for the more. Now, how do we get to that more? Okay, we have to activate faith moving from one level of faith to the next level of faith, right? And walk in obedience to the Word. Now, I want to, we know we gave a lot of testimonies last week, but I want to hear from Nettie here this morning, she has a testimony that will fit right in here, and uh, I, want to, I want to be encouraged as we hear this testimony this morning. Um, well, I would have shared last week, but it was still a testimony in process, and <laughs> it came to fruition um, Friday. I was uh, given a job offer by a company, um, they approached me in November, and it's just, it's been waiting for things to fall into place. Um, but I wanted to testify just of the goodness of God. And it really is a, it boils down to just walking in obedience to his leading because it's like this couldn't have happened any other way the way it did. Um, but around COVID time frame, um, God made it very clear it was time to leave the company I was working for. And he opened the door at the company I'm at right now. Um, but it, it, it meant taking a pay cut and it meant just moving into something new and uncomfortable, and I, I, it was hard. Um, but through obedience, we've stepped into that, and God has blessed us tremendously there and provided for all of our needs and just had to learn to be obedient in the season um, and all of that. And lots of there were lots of learning opportunities while I've been there, but God has just uh, blessed the obedience, and now this new opportunity has come forth, and uh, just encourage you that even when things don't look like they're moving, 
um, things aren't going the way you would like them to. God is still working. And if you're gonna, if you're willing to just be obedient and keep, pr- keep declaring the life words that we were talking about in prayer time mm-hmm. over your future and over what God has for you, mm-hmm. like He'll bring it forth. He He can't help Himself. So, um, yeah, just testimony of a new job, and it's just more than I could have asked or imagined, and I'm just excited. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. You know, it's which is a, a testimony of obedience. Okay, doing something that doesn't make sense in the natural. When you feel God moving you, and it's going to be a pay cut, you say, God, why? But when you do what God asks you to do, there's a reason for it. There was a whole lot of learning experience, like she said. And by being in that place of obedience, brought her to a, a greater pay than she had before, which she didn't say. So it's... It's God working in the midst of everything and learning through what you do. If your, your step of obedience takes you to a better place. Faith to faith, one faith level to another faith level. Believing for the more. Amen. Believing for the more. And to do that, he's been taking us to Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20, which we know. Uh, we've been reading that a lot, declaring that a lot. But this is what God has been tell, speaking to us lately. Because it says, now to him who is able, okay, God is able, right? As we're not wondering, God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think, according to the power that works in us. Yeah. Now, I like it in the original language, it says abundantly, abundantly. Yeah. <laughs> exceedingly, abundantly, abundantly. Yeah. And uh, I want to read this now in the Passion, because I like the way it's worded there. Yeah. Uh, look, look at how, how, it's, how it's said here. This is drawing from, from uh, uh, you know, being translated out of a lot of the original language here. Never doubt God's mighty power to work in you and to accomplish all this. He will achieve infinitely more than your greatest request, your most unbelievable dream, and exceed your wildest imagination. Listen, He will outdo them all for His miraculous power constantly energizes you. That is powerful right there. What basically God is telling us to quit settling for less than what He intends for us to have. We tend to settle. Well, I'm not seeing things happen the way that I think they ought to happen. I, I know God wants to bless me, but I'm just not seeing this yet. So, well, this looks good. I'll settle for this. Yeah. Don't settle. Press in. Yeah. Press in. As long as you know that you're walking in obedience to what God has called you to, keep pressing in, keep moving toward it. Don't settle for less because God has more. It says He will achieve infinitely more for us. Infinitely more. Not that, not that he can achieve or that he might achieve. No, it says he will achieve infinitely more for us because of his miraculous power constantly, not just some of the time or just in time of crisis, but constantly energizes us. His miracle working power is constantly empowering us. Empowering us to do what? To continue to hang on and push for more. Okay, if he says he wants more force, he's going to empower us to get there. Yeah. Amen? Amen? So again, God is telling us to quit settling for less than what he intends for us to have. Amen. Now, I just had to stop and think. I, I was reading Charles Capps and I was reading Jerry Seville. And I'm trying to remember which one of them said that. I know Jana has that down too. But she says, God told him people can have what they say, instead they say what they have. Mm -hmm. They can have what they say, that's the Bible, but instead they say what they have. That's not pressing in for more. That's 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 settling. Uh, This is what I've got, I guess it's good enough, it's all I'm going to get, so I have to live here in this mess. No, go on, press in for the more that God has for you. Don't quit. Start believing for the more. 
start believing that you have received the more. Yes, because we believe that we have received the promises. Mark 11, 22, 23, 24. Believe that you have received the promises and start living in the more. Yes. Okay, when we start living in the more, the more catches up with us. That don't, mean to go, that don't mean spend beyond your means. Yes. It means believe you're living in the blessings that are greater than what you have seen yet in the natural, knowing that those blessings are there for you, and you step into it by faith. Yes. Amen? Before we can go forward, we have to know where we are. Reciting our testimony states where we are because of what God has done for us. Okay, I'm here now because this is what God has done. This is my testimony. I am here. God did this. Now that puts me in this position. I am who I am because of what God has done for me. I am in this station of life because of what God has done for me by putting faith in the Word of God to fulfill His promise to me. Now that I know where I am, because I testified about it. Okay, now that I know where I am, I release my faith in the Word of God to move forward to receive the more yeah. that God intends for me to have. Yeah. Remember, faith to faith. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, testimony should be the greatest encouragement we have to get to move into the more. Yeah. To move into the more that God has for us also requires us to understand that there's more required of us. We must start operating in the greater level of responsibility that's required of us to develop the integrity and the character that will bear up under the greater weight of the more. That's true. Uh -huh. Yes, yeah, that's crucial. What happens? Sometimes you want to build on to you've got a building here and you want to build on to it. What do you got to do? You got to increase the strength of the foundation so it can hold on to the more that you're building on to it. Yeah. Our life is the same way. Yeah. Our foundation of faith was great to get us to where we're at. But if we're believing for the more, that means we've got to build a bigger foundation of faith, continue to pressing in for that greater foundation of faith. How do we do that? Get into the Word. Yes. Develop the character. Develop the integrity. And those take on the nature of Jesus that the Word is building in us. So we have the foundation of integrity, the foundation of character to hold up under the weight of the more that God wants to give us. Amen. That's where a lot of people crash and burn. Yes. They get the more blessing but haven't developed the integrity to hang on to it. Yes. They don't have the character to live in the blessing that God is pouring out. Operating in that level of responsibility is just not something we do. It's something we must live. Yes. Yes. High degrees of integrity and character are not something you just move into and out of when it's convenient. Yes. Uh -huh. Amen. I guess I better watch my P's and Q's. We've got this going on. No, it's, it's living in that degree yes. of integrity. Yes. That's good. Character is developed to be maintained, not to step out of when it's convenient. Uh -huh. yes. yeah. That's good. High integrity and character emanate from the nature you have developed in your life. It's the fruit that is the evidence of the condition of your heart. Uh -huh. Now that takes us back to what we studied a couple weeks ago. When we were talking about Romans 12, 1 and 2, it's about being transformed by the renewing of your mind. Yeah. Right? Being transformed by the renewing of your mind. We change the focus of our minds from the way the world system operates to the principles of the kingdom of God. Yeah. The truth of the word of God leads us into understanding our identity in Christ and His righteous nature. Okay, that's the character, that's the integrity, that's where the nature that, that of, of Christ that is being uh, formed in us brings us to that place to where we can uphold yeah. the more that's coming to us, right? Yeah. Now we know that in 2 Corinthians 2.21, it says, For He made Him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in Him. 
What are we looking at? We're establishing identity. How do we do that? By knowing where we came from to get to where we are. Testimonies tell us where we came from to get to where we are. But it also it tells us where we are. Okay, this is where I am. Because, because of what God did, this is where I am. Because of what Jesus did, now we have become the righteousness of God in Christ. We know where we are. We know who we are. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 4, and six, 4 through 6 tells us, we do this a lot. I love these verses. God who is rich in mercy because of His great love with which He loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ by grace you have been saved and raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Yeah, Our identity. Yes. Our identity. Right? It's in Christ and the authority that is given to us in His name. Yes. We move out of the realm of the feelings of being unworthy of blessings and being unsure of receiving answers for our prayers. And if we can believe the Word of God will work for us, we move out of the realm of doubt and fear and anxiety where we're hoping something will happen. And we move into the realm of confidence in the Word of God because we know God. Once again, trust is the foundation of our faith. So if we're to live in the power of our testimonies, we have to uphold the integrity of our testimonies. Hmm, are you living what you just said? Upholding the integrity of our testimonies. We have the great responsibility now to move into the more that God has for us by the power of our testimonies because they unlock the flow of heavenly treasures that God wants to pour into our lives. Amen. Are you getting a hold of that? Amen. We're giving testimony of what God has done to bring us to where we are, knowing that God is going to continue to work the same works in us to bring us to the next level that He has for us. We develop the faith to get to that level, but we have to develop the character integrity to maintain the more we receive there. Because our testimonies, as we give them, when we're bragging on God, God's going to continue to do His work. True. You know what I'm saying? God did this for me. God did this for me. Why? Because this is what He does. When we're declaring His Word, He can, that unlocks the power, the testimony unlocks the power for the more to begin to be transformed into our lives. Yes. All right. Whew. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 6. I spent a lot of time in Proverbs lately. I've uh, been reading a lot of Proverbs. But uh, anyway, this, this one here you got, we're going to go to. We're going to bounce back and forth between two chapters. But uh, we're going to go to chapter 6, and uh, we're going to read verse 20 and 21. It says, My son, keep your father's command, and do not forsake the law of your mother. Bind them continually upon your heart and tie them around your neck. That must be important. Yes. Okay. Let's see how, how this is worded in the Passion Translation. This will help you a little bit. It says, My son, obey your father's godly instruction and follow your mother's life-giving teaching. Now, that makes it a little more clear, doesn't it? But listen to this. Fill your heart with their advice and let your life be shaped by what they've taught you. What are we hearing here? Listen to and obey the godly counsel given by your parents, by your spiritual parents, by the elders in the faith that are charged with giving you instruction that will shape the godly character of your life. I said godly counsel. Yes, godly. Godly counsel. Not everybody that speaks into your life speaks godly counsel. There's a lot of counsel given these days that's not godly. That is our responsibility here. 
according to Ephesians 4.12, to teach and equip the saints for the work of ministry. Speaking the word, giving the godly counsel that the word shows us, right? Not everybody has had the opportunity to draw from their parents, the natural parents, godly counsel. But we have spiritual parents. We have elders in the faith that we look to and we, we uh, listen to what they're speaking to us when they're speaking godly counsel so that we can take in and begin to do what uh, the instructions that are given to us. Amen. Godly counsel. Yes. All right. Now, turn back to Proverbs 3 for a moment. Proverbs 3, verse 3 and 4. I want you to show the similarity here. Proverbs 3, verse 3 starts, Let not mercy and truth forsake you, but bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart, listen, and so find favor and high esteem in the sight of God and man. Yeah. Now you know I'm going to the Passion with this, right? All right. Those same two verses in the Passion translation says, Hold on to loyal love and don't let go. Mm -hmm. Now what's that? that? That's talking about the mercy and the truth that's coming to us, right, from, from God through those who He has put in our life. Hold on to loyal love and don't let go. Be faithful to all that you have been taught. Yeah. Let your life be shaped by integrity <laughs> with truth written upon your heart. That's how you will find favor and understanding with both God and men. You will gain the reputation of living life well. Wow. Yes. Now, those are powerful words. Yes. Something to grab hold of. I'm encouraging you, go back over these this coming week. Go back over these verses. There's something you need to take in, grab hold of, and make a part of binding them to your heart. Okay, so what is God saying here to the writer here? Godly, in, godly integrity and character that is developed by taking heed to and embracing by holding on to tightly the instruction and counsel from the Word of God. Let's go back to Proverbs 6. Verse 22. Okay, we're going to say, this, this is what we're told to do. Now, what's, what's the results? Look at verse 22. When you roam, they will lead you. When you sleep, they will keep you. When you awake, they will speak with you. <clears throat> Heeding and living by the instruction from the Scriptures and the counsel of your godly leaders will set you up to receive protection as you follow the course the Holy Spirit is prepared for you to follow. Amen. You will have peace, protection, security, and restful, refreshing sleep. You'll recognize the voice of the Spirit and there receive His guidance, His wisdom, and revelation for blessed living. Yes. Yeah, let's do it. Let's read it from the Passion. Okay. Verse 22 of chapter 6. Their wisdom will guide you. What wisdom? Remember we're talking about the instruction and counsel we got, right? Mm -hmm. The godly counsel. Their wisdom will guide you wherever you go and keep you from bringing harm to yourself. Yeah. Is what happens. Most of the things we get into are self-inflicted. We weren't listening carefully. We weren't following the directions that God gave us. We weren't taking the godly counsel that was given to us. We strayed from the path, put ourselves in the ditch. All right, now, he says, so to keep you from bringing harm to yourself, their instruction will whisper to you at every sunrise and direct you through a brand new day. You hear the voice of God whispering to you every day, this is how I want you to do it today. This is what I have for you today. This is the path I've got laid out for you today. Here's where your blessings are going to be. Let me take you to them. Yes. 
Isn't that a beautiful way of yeah. saying that godly wisdom and counsel will bring you to the direction, the protection, the provision, the peace, the security, and the revelation of the Spirit? Yeah. All right, let's go back again to chapter 6. I mean chapter 3, we were in 6. Go back to chapter 3, looking at the wrong page. We'll go back to 3, uh, 21 through 26. It's talking about, again, the wisdom from God and through His counsels, right? My son, let them not depart from your eyes. Keep sound wisdom and discretion, so they will be life to your soul and grace to your neck. Then you will walk safely in your way. Your foot will not stumble. When you lie down, you will not be afraid. Yes, you will lie down and your sleep will be sweet. Do not be afraid of sudden terror, nor of trouble from, wicked, from the wicked when it comes. For the Lord will be your confidence and keep your foot from being caught. Now, what's he say? You notice how the same theme is in both of these chapters. Ring about what we're doing here. But okay, okay. Now you know we're going to have to read this from the Passion Translation as well here. Because what we're talking about is, is talking about the benefits of living by the counsel of those who are instructing you in the Word of God and how to take in that Word and make its provision part of your life. So it says here, My child... Never drift off course from these two goals of your life. To walk in wisdom and to discover your purpose. Don't ever forget how they empower you. For they strengthen you inside and out and inspire you to do what's right. You will be energized and refreshed by the healing they bring. They will give you living hope to guide you. And not, of one, and not one of life's tests will cause you to stumble. Amen. You will sleep like a baby, safe and sound. Your rest will be sweet and secure. You will not be subject to terror, for it will not terrify you. It doesn't mean there's any terror out there. Right. You're not subject to it. Terror will not terrify you. Uh-huh. Nor, will you nor will the disrespectful be able to push you aside. Because God is your confidence in time of crisis, keeping your heart at rest in every situation. Amen. Talk about the peace we were praying about this morning. Yeah. Peace of God. Yeah. Living in that peace. All right. This is good stuff or what? Yeah. Back to Proverbs 6. Got another verse there. Verse 23. For the commandment is a lamp and the law a light. Reproofs of instruction are the way of life. Hmm. Reproofs of instruction are the way of life. Okay, what does that mean? Well, let's, let's, let's get a different understanding by reading it in the, in the Passion. He says, For truth is a bright beam of light shining into every area of your life instructing and correcting you to discover the ways to godly living. The Word of God is a beacon of truth shining into every area of our life. We, did you hear this in prayer meeting this morning? Like I said, you guys are all preaching my message here during prayer meeting. You're getting the revelations that show you what God wants to bring out to us today, right? The beacon of light, okay, the Word of God shining truth into every area of our life. When we allow that, when we allow that truth to do its work, yeah. it will bring the illumination that will expose everything that needs correction to bring us into total agreement with the Word of God. Yeah. Yeah. Key words, when we allow yeah. the truth to do its work. When the light exposes what needs to be changed. That we need to act on it and change it. Okay. I like what it said in the, in the, uh, the verse we read. It says, 
reproofs or meaning correction, correction of instruction, is a way of life. Yes, it is. It's a way of life. We should be looking for correction all the time. Yeah. I, I want to make sure I'm always doing it right. I want to make sure I'm walking in the way that God has. I don't, if I take one step off the path, I want to hear the correction saying, nope, that's, that's off the track. Get back on. Yeah. Is that making sense? Yeah. It should be a way of life to be wanting to hear instruction for correction. Yes. It's not something bad. It's something good. Yeah. It's like was said this morning. Correction or, or conviction that God brings to us, doesn't, it's, it's not a bad thing. It's a good thing. Yeah. Conviction comes out of God's great love for us, wanting us to keep on that track so that we're walking in the integrity and the character that will uphold the blessings He's pouring out to us. Yes. He loves us so much, He doesn't want us to miss out. He doesn't want us to step one foot off the road. No. So the conviction He brings to us is saying, whoop, whoop, you're, you're taking a step out, out of line there, get back on track, get back on track. So we should be listening for the instruction of correction. And when it comes, not say, well, I did something wrong. Yeah, and let the devil beat you up because he's right there to say, see, you did something wrong. You did something wrong. You see, you're not worthy of blessing now. So you just, you just messed up. God doesn't like you anymore. Yeah. Okay. But what else did we hear this morning? The roar of the lion is just a puff to those who are walking in the integrity of, of the Word of God. We take away his roar when we don't listen to the lies of the enemy and walk in the direction of the instruction of correction that God brings to us out of the depths of His great love. That's good. Yeah. So, what I say, when we allow the truth to do its work, it will bring the illumination that will expose everything that needs correction to bring us into total agreement with the Word of God. That's where a lot of people run into trouble. Either they do not look into the Word to allow it to expose these things that are out of line. You know, they're not, they're not, in other words, they're not looking for that light of truth. Right. Or when it's exposed, they ignore it. Yeah. Uh -huh. The verse that says instruction that will bring about correction as a way of life, you know, it should be something that's expected. If you're flying a plane or piloting a ship, okay, uh, you set your course for your desired destination. Right? Now, winds or currents may cause you to drift from the course that you've set. That's why it's important to constantly be consulting your compass to check your direction to, uh, so that uh, your, your line of travel will, will stay on the necessary course and you make the corrections that, that are necessary to stay on that course. Is that right? So when we get the, the light of, of revelation, this is, you know, if you stay on this course, it's going, to, it's going to veer off into a dangerous place. You may not be off path yet, but you might be turning in a direction that will take you off the path. Yeah. And so when conviction comes, it's, oh, wait a minute, correct your course, correct your course. Yeah. It's like that annoying voice in the car. <laughs> Correcting, rerouting. yeah, rerouting, rerouting, correct, correct, your, correct your course. Okay, so that voice comes to us. We need to be paying attention and putting ourselves back on track, back on course, right? Now, there may be many things that try to cause us to drift from our course. Okay? When we have the Word hidden in our heart, as it says, any variance from that course will be immediately noticed. Okay, and we can make the necessary corrections to get back on track. What did the psalmist say? Thy word have I hidden in my heart that I may not sin against thee. It means that I won't step off the track because your word will keep me on course. Right? Now sometimes there are areas of our life that are not so sanctified yet. I mean, it's just truth, right? Some things still need to be brought into submission to God. The longer we walk with God, the more things we find need correction and brought into sanctification. It's a process. When, you know, a baby is born, they got a whole lot of stuff to learn before they become an adult, okay? Before they can be mature. Some never do. Anyway, <laughs> as we are born into the kingdom, we've got a maturing process. As we go along, we learn things 
that we need to do better or quit doing altogether in order to be on the right course, to be mature in our faith. It's a process of life, not something to bring condemnation, but something to rejoice over that we are moving in the right direction, shaking off the things we don't need, adding the things we do need. Amen? Amen? That's just part of growing in our, our maturing process. Okay? Now, old habits or quirks in our behavior or nature need to be brought into correction with the Word of God, right? Yes. Now, these verses tell us that correction is essential for a life that wants to maintain that high degree of integrity and character that we're talking about. Yes. Now some, and you've all heard people say, well, you know, that's just the way I am. And just the way I do things. And well, you know that I mean well. You can mean well and be a, a mess and wrecking everybody's life around you at the same time. Yeah, I said all those hurtful things, but I, know, I mean well. Right. <laughs> what are they doing? They're trying to overlook their bad behaviors or justify them, or explain them away by saying, well, I refuse to grow in that area. I refuse to mature into my area of integrity and character. And uh, you're just going to have to take me the way I am. Well, we're going to love you the way you are, but we ain't going to be too happy about it. Can I say that? Because we're going to love you the way you are, but at the same time we're going to be praying that that conviction continues to work in your life to bring you to a place of understanding how to move into that place of maturing into that level of integrity and, and high character, right? I mean, just, all you're doing is making excuses for not wanting to discipline your life enough to make the corrections that God is telling you to make. It's all about discipline. When you're not allowing the Word to bring you into that place of making corrections, sometimes it's necessary for a spiritual leader who's charged with bringing you the revelation of God's Word to try to bring that Word of correction to you in order to help you get on the right course. Yeah. That's what the, uh, we were talking about this morning. Um, also, um, speaking life words. No, speaking life words. We, we're a body who's learned how to speak life words. We speak the word over people. We speak life words. And you're not, not only when you're speaking to them, but when you're speaking about them. That's, you're still speaking life words or death words. Okay? Now, when we're, if, if someone gets off track with their life words, we're not word police. Not superstitious about words we speak. But yet, if we hear someone speaking words that aren't necessarily edifying life words, I believe it's up to us to say, oh, you know, we, we really need to, uh, let, let's change that to say this. Okay, uh, iron sharpens iron, the word says. We are the ones who are helping each other to speak life words. So if you truly want to bring the discipline of God's Word into your life and live with that high degree of integrity, you must be willing to listen to the correction and take the instructions that will help you get your life on course. Yeah. Amen. One more scripture. Let's go back to Proverbs 3. Proverbs 3, 11 and 12. My son, do not despise the chastening of the Lord, nor detest his correction. For whom the Lord loves, he corrects, trains, reasons together with, just as a father, the son in whom he delights. You want to hear it in the Passion? My child, when the Lord God speaks to you, Never take his words lightly and never be upset when he corrects you. For the Father's discipline comes only from his passionate love and pleasure for you. Even when it seems like his correction is harsh, it's still better than any father on earth gives his child. His great love. 
Everything emanates from His great love. Goodness. <laughs> I told you we were all preaching my message. Every word that came out this morning, how His correction comes out of our love, how everything that, that He's trying to help us to do comes out of His great love. So uh, all I can do is say, I encourage you. Listen to the counsel that is given to you and, the, and receive the correction of the Lord. Be determined. You get this. Be determined to discipline your life to follow the instructions from the Lord to put and to keep, say, to put and to keep your life on course. Press in for, desire with great passion for, Position yourself to receive the more that God has designed for your life. Yeah. You've got to position yourself for it. Press in for it. Grab hold of it. Dig in for it. Move towards it. Yeah. Position yourself to receive the more that God has designed for your life. Develop that high degree of integrity and high standard of character that will bear up under the greater degree of responsibility that you must operate in as you move into God's more. Yes. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. Praise God. Help anybody today? Yes. Let's stand together. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you for your word to us today. Lord, you keep reminding us from week by week and, and day by day how you have more for us than what we've ever imagined. More for us than what we can possibly think of in our own ability. So Lord, we, we determine to press in to hearing your spirit so that we can move into the more that you have for us, that we can follow the course that you have for us and that we can open our heart to receive what you have that is more than what we could imagine. But Lord, we also determine to mature into that higher level of integrity and character that will uphold the more that you pour out to us knowing the responsibility that you've placed upon us. But we discipline ourselves to move into that place that you've called us to in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And so, with that instruction, we say to you all out there, continue to move in the flow of God's blessing by stepping into that higher degree of, of integrity and character that God has designed for you to live in and receive the more that He has in, in store for you in the days ahead. God bless you and uh, keep giving your testimony of all that God has done looking for the more. Bless you.